the difference between. So what was the pattern and the difference? What was going on? How was it growing? On that point. No. So it was going, so it went 0.3, it grew by 0.3, by 0.3, by 0.6, by 0.7, and then 1.2. So they were, the difference was adding three every time. So not like in the actual numbers that they gave, but the, the difference between each of those numbers was increasing by three every time. Um, but just a little bit of a challenge on that one. But I want to look at number seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So a few of these um, so that we're all on the same page before we practice a little bit more today. So as a reminder, we started out last week and we talked about this idea of exponentials. Right, it's a line, well, a function that has A is our intercept, B is our common difference, and then it's to the x, right? The difference with this exponential is that it's to the x power. We haven't seen that yet. Now, yesterday, we talked about exponential growth. So the same idea, except it's always exponential growth. And eventually we'll get to exponential decay. But exponential growth, is underneath the umbrella of exponentials, but just being a little bit more specific with that. That's what we looked at yesterday, and that's what we're looking at today. As a part of exponential growth, we talked about compound interest. And that has a little bit different of a formula, a little bit different terms, but it keeps a lot of these same ideas from exponential growth. All right, compound interest is kind of a way to apply exponential growth in the most common way that we see that applied is with money, with banking. Um, I think they talk about it with like tickets a lot of times. So uh, population is another one that we'll see. Um, but that's kind of a recap and a big picture of what we've been talking about. So if we look at number seven and eight, write a function that represents the situation. All we need to do is write the function. We do not need to solve it. So a population of 50,000 so we're starting out with 50,000 people. That's our baseline, that's our base point. And then we're growing by 1.4% each year. So we have one plus. Now where some of us get confused starting off is just writing a percent as a decimal. So if we have 1.4% write it as a decimal, we need to move that decimal point twice, so we'd have one plus point zero one four, and that would just be to the T, I believe, is the term we use, to the T. So if we were to simplify it, Y equals 50,000 times one point zero one four to the T power. That's all we're looking for there. Now number eight, we're going with the same idea. We deposit $200 into account, so we start with $200. At time zero, we have $200. So just like in our exponential, our front value, our A was our y-intercept. We don't call it our y-intercept. We call it, like with money, we call it our principal. Um, but our starting value is in the front. At time zero, this is how much we have. So $200, one plus point zero three to the T. How do we feel about those two? Just writing those equations. Pretty good. The compound interest is where we get a little confused with writing, I'm guessing. That's fine. We'll work on that today. So moving to number nine. Is that on your guys' back page? That's still in front. Number nine on the back side. The function y equals 20 times 1.04 T represents the value of Y of the savings account after T years. So if we're just looking at this function with part A, what is the initial investment? How much did they start out putting in? What do we think? How much did they start out putting in? What? 20. Yeah. Just like we talked about. Our front number, we talked about it as our Y intercept. It's, in this case, our initial investment, or we'll hear it be called our principal sometimes as well. So they start out with 20 bucks. 
what is the rate of growth? If we put it as a percent. So that looks at more what's going on inside these parentheses. What is our rate of growth? 4%. Because remember, in these parentheses, it's 1 plus whatever our rate of growth is. So if we are taking off this 1, our rate of growth is 0 0.04, and that would be 4%. And then what is the value of the investment over 10 years? Scott, Scott, what do we do for part C? What? No, no clue. You have absolutely no idea what to do for part C. What? The decimal. Come on, Scott, Scott. All right, Michael, what do we do? Dang it. On the second page, you're still on the front page. I want to figure this out. Go to the second page. Uh, what is it? Nine. Oh, see. Um, what's the value? Um, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. You gotta ask that. Remember, with our exponential growth. That's to the T. And T represents time. So anytime they give us, well not anytime, but most of the time when they give us some value of time, solution, we plug, plug it in for T. That's it. Just like on the front page with numbers 3 through 6, they gave you a value for T, you plugged it in for T. We've been plugging numbers in for one of those exponents for like four days now. And what do we get for part C? We get that one there. Twenty nine point six? Yep. Twenty nine dollars and sixty cents. For part C. Number ten. Now I think this is where we start to use compound interest. Yeah. Ten, eleven, twelve. This is probably where things got a little bit shaky. So like I said, on the homework, I just wanted you to give them a try. And if we didn't totally get it, then that's okay. Is this like going in and out kind of? Mm -hmm. Does anyone else see that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a seizure if you start that too long. Write a function that represents the situation. Find the balance of the account after the given period of time. So we're dealing with our compound interest now, which is that bottom one, remember. So, $400 is deposited, or a $400 deposit that earns 2% annual interest, compounded monthly, and we want to know how much is going to be in there after nine months. If we're writing our equation, what does this $400, $400 represent in our equation? Which one of those does $400 represent? I thought somebody said it. P, right? It's our principal, or it's our starting value. So we start with 400 bucks. One plus. Now, what is the rate? What is the rate at which we are occurring interest? 2%. So 0 0.02. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky. N represents, I'll get the exact wording that they tell us in the textbook. It says the number of times interest is compounded per year. So our interest is compounded annually, and then inside each year it's compounded every single month. So it's compounded 12 times in a year. Now we're multiplying our n, once again, times t. Do, do they tell you to write an equation first? Yeah, they do. So if we're simplifying this, let's, they split it up into kind of two parts. If we're writing our function first, y equals 400, 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12. Do the 12t. Now they tell us, all right, find out how much is going to be in there after nine months. So t equals 9. Well, times 
nine up in our parentheses. They'll end up giving us $406.16 after the cost. What questions do we have on that? We'll look at one more example. Do we have any questions on that? Same thing, we're writing the function, and then we're going to solve for what's going on after three years. So, our principal this time is 5,500, our starting value, plus we have 6.4%, and then how often is this interest compounded? What does it tell us? What? Every six months. Yep, so in a year that would be two times, right? Good job, Skylar. So divided by two times two to the T. In our simplest form, when we're writing these equations, like on the test and everything, I'd have you, I probably will have Y equals, and I'll have a blank right here, some parentheses, and a blank right here, and then I'll have something up in the exponent, but I would expect you to simplify this and write this as one number on the test. Now we're compounded after every three, or it's looking for what's going on after three years. this we would get six thousand question uh, number eleven now we I could see where we would get a little bit confused if we were supposed to use this equation exponential growth or our compound interest Notice with these, it says it's how often it's compounded. So when it says compounded semi-annually, compounded quarterly, compounded monthly, or something like that, that keys us in that, hey, we're dealing with compound interest, and those are always talking about money. So that, that helps us out, too. Last one. And we'll see one like this, very similar to this, on the practice today, and I imagine we'll throw one on the test as well. You deposit $1,000 in a savings account, and it earns 10% annual interest compounded monthly. So that right there, we're familiar with. That we can write an equation of. On top of that, you also have $50 per month in a safe at home. So you also save $50 per month. Write a function. All of this, where B of T, so this first one represents the balance in your savings account, and H of T represents the amount in your safe. So let's first write this B of T, what we're talking about in the beginning. You have a deposit of a thousand bucks in the savings account that earns 10%, so 0.1, compounded monthly, so divided by 12 to the 12 times t. That's how we would just write that first chunk. That's what our b of t would be. Now this h of t is talking about, hey, that's what you're saving at home. You're saving 50 bucks. How about I write this as a variable? If you're saving 50 bucks per month, how much would that be per year? How much are you saving per year? Because our B of T, this first one, is dealing in years. So we need H of T to be dealing in years as well. So 50 bucks a month, how much would that be? 600 a year. So instead of writing 50 here, 
we have 600, and our time is in years, so we can do 600 T, 600 bucks per year. Now all we need to do to write our C of T, right, that's ultimately what we're trying to do, is combine them. So the total amount that they're saving, between their savings account and their safe at home, is 1,000 times... All we need to do is combine those. That's all that they're looking for. Yeah, there is a lot there, but we already know how to do the first one. That's what we've been practicing this whole time. And the second one is just using maybe not common sense, but just slowing down and reading, reading that a little bit. Probably the trickiest part of that is making sure that this our time is in years. It'd be easy to put plus 50 T. That'd be an easy mistake. Questions on any of that?